topic of joints in serious views and we will be looking closely at left outer joints. In case you're not familiar with the concept of joints or, or how to build inner joints, please refer to the previous video in this series. So let's get started. In order to understand what are left outer joints, it is best to look at an example. So consider a database table storing material master information, having the columns material number, material type, and material group. Now the data in this table would look something like this. As an example, the material steel 101 has the material type raw material and the material group carbon steel. Let's now consider another table storing the purchase order information. This table would have the columns purchase order number, material number, and quantity. The data in this table would look something like this. As an example, in the purchase order number 45001, the material steel 101 was ordered with a quantity of 5 tons. The joint condition linking these two tables is going to be the material number. Now let's say I built a CDS view with an inner joint on these two tables and I am interested in the columns material number, material type from the material master table and the columns purchase order number and purchase quantity from the purchase order table. As we learned in the last video, an inner join retrieves all the common records from both the tables. So let's just quickly look at what the output of the inner join is going to be. The material steel 101 was purchased in the purchase order 45001. So these two records are going to be joined together and would appear in the inner join output. Similarly, the material starter 40 was ordered in the purchase order 45004. It would appear in the join output like this. And the material copper 65 was ordered in the purchase order 45005 and would appear in the join output like this. Let's look at the material steel 1 or 2. This was not purchased in any purchase order. It is not common to both the tables and hence it will not appear in the inner join output. As we know, inner join only retrieves the common records, records that exist in both the tables based on the join field condition. Similarly, the material capacitor 10 will also not appear in the inner join output since it only exists in one of the tables. The material battery 75 was ordered twice in the purchase order 45002 and 45003. Hence, we will see two records for this material in the inner join output. So finally, this is how the inner join output is going to look like. All the common records from both these two tables have been fetched. Records that were not common have been ignored. So now let's come to the main topic of this lesson. How would the output of the left outer join be? By definition, the left outer join will bring in all the matching or common records from both the tables, just like an inner join. In addition to that, it will also bring in all the unmatched records from the left hand side table. So when I say unmatched, it means records in the left hand side table, which do not have a matching entry in the right hand side table. For example, let's see how the output is going to be if I did a left outer join on these same two tables. In our example, the material master is the table on the left hand side and the purchase order is the table on the right hand side. The material steel 101 was purchased in the purchase order 45001. These are matching records. They will be joined together and would appear in the left outer join output, just like they would in the inner join output. 
Similarly, the material starter 40 was ordered in the purchase order 45004 and the material copper 65 was ordered in the purchase order 45005. They would appear in the output of the left outer join just like they would in the inner join. The material battery 75 was ordered twice in the purchase orders 45002 and 45003. Hence, we would see two records for this in the output of the left outer join. Until now, the materials that we have seen are common. They are matching in both the tables and will be retrieved in the left outer join output. In fact, if you see, until now, the output of the left outer join is exactly the same as that of the inner join. And here comes the difference. The left outer join will also retrieve the unmatched records from the table on the left hand side. So if there is a record in the left hand side table that does not have a corresponding entry on the right hand side table, it will still be retrieved in the view output. So in our example, the material steel 102 which has no matching record in the right hand side table will still be retrieved in the output of the left outer join. The values in all the columns of the right hand side table will remain empty. This means purchase order number, purchase order quantity will remain empty. Similarly, the material capacitator 10 will also be retrieved. The unmatched columns from the right hand side table remain empty. So this is how left outer join works. All records from the left hand side table will be retrieved. Whether it has a matching record in the right hand side table or not does not matter. All records from the left hand side table are retrieved and only matching records from the right hand side table are retrieved. Okay, uh, let us now see how to create a CDS view with a left outer join in Eclipse. We identify the package under which we want to create the CDS view definition. Right click, new, other app repository object. Since we want to create a CDS view, we type in the name data definition. Click on next. We put in a name for the CDS view, provide a definition. Click on next. Select a transport request from the list or we can even enter it manually. Click on next. It's always a good idea to use one of the predefined templates. So then you get a lot of the source code in. Let's select view entity and then finish. We are going to create a join with the material master table MARA on the left hand side and the purchase order table EKPO on the right hand side. So let's put in the names of these data sources here. As select from MARA, we provide an alias for this table. The join type is going to be left out of join. And then we put in the table on the right hand side of the join. We provide an alias for this as well. And then we specify the join condition. Let us now add in a few fields from the MARA table. Let's take the material number field and then the material type field. Okay, now let us go ahead and add in a few fields from the purchase order table. We put in the purchase order number, the purchase order item. Let's put in the quantity. And for this quantity, the corresponding unit of measure would be the MEINS field. We have a small typo. Let's correct this quick. Now this quantity is linked to this unit of measure. 
And in order to build this relationship, in order to build this reference relationship in CDS views, we shall use the annotation and the annotation for that looks something like this. Always use the code completion. It's much quicker. So semantics dot quantity dot unit of measure. So this is the annotation that we're looking for. Semantics dot quantity dot unit of measure. And the value of the annotation would be then. So what this piece of code is effectively doing is it is telling the system that for this quantity field, the one that comes right after the annotation. So for this quantity field, the reference unit of measure field would be the UOM, which is the alias of the unit of measure field. All right, so let's save and activate this. So um, just to summarize what we have done, we defined a view entity called as ZI underscore material underscore purchase. It retrieves data from two tables. The table on the left hand side is the MERA table. It has an alias called as material. The table on the right hand side is EKPO. It has the alias purchase and we used a left outer join. The material is on the left hand side and the purchase order table is on the right hand side. Using the left outer join, we create a join between them and the join condition is the material number field. That's the field linking these two tables. Then after we added a few fields from the uh, from the left hand side table using the alias name and then we added a few fields from the right hand side table and since there was a quantity unit of measure field pair involved we used the annotation to specify the reference relationship between them now let's have a look at the result returned by this view so right click open with data preview or simply press the f8 key and here of course you can see the columns that we had defined in the view now, in order to better understand the results, let's filter down to a particular material, and that is the NL001. Now, let's look closely. We can see multiple records returned by the view for this particular material. This particular material exists only once in MARA table. As we all know, the MARA table is the master data table for all materials, and in this table, each material occurs only once. But you see multiple records for this material in this view because there were multiple times this material was purchased, which means there are multiple records for this material in the right hand side table. This is exactly similar to what you would see in an inner join output for this particular material. Let us now filter to another material and this time this is the one. Now, this is interesting. This material, we can see the material number, material type. So it has retrieved some data from the left-hand side table, MARA. But the fields on the right-hand side from the purchase order table are all empty. This is because this material was never purchased at all. However, since we have built a left outer join, oh, the record from the left-hand side table has been retrieved irrespective of the fact whether it exists in the right hand side table or not. And because it does not exist in the right hand side table, the fields over here are all blank. Now this is the major difference between a left outer join and an inner join. An inner join would not have retrieved this material since it's not common to both the tables. Let us put in the third material. Now for this particular material, we can see that there is just one record in the view output. That is because this material was purchased just once. Or in other words, there is just one record with this material number in the EKPO table, the table on the right hand side. And that is then the purchase order which you see here in the view output. Let us take off the filter completely now and then scroll down a bit. We see the values for the fields from the right hand side table for some of the materials are empty. We talked about this before and we had seen an example of such a material. Uh, this is because these material numbers do not exist in the right hand side table EKPO. But as this is a left outer join, the fields from the left hand side table for such materials would still be retrieved. And the fields from the right hand side table as seen here would remain empty. Now, 
the question you would be asking yourself is when to use an inner join and when to use a left outer join. If you want to view all the materials, irrespective of whether they have been purchased or not, then you would use a left join. For example, you see over here, there are some materials that have never been purchased, but you still see them in the output. These materials have been purchased and you see them in the output as well. But as I said, there are many materials that have not been purchased, but you still see them in the output. This is because this is a left outer join. And if we speak in general terms, if you want to see all records from the left hand side table, irrespective of whether they exist in the right hand side table or not, then you would use a left join. Now, on the other hand, if you only wanted to see materials that have been purchased or in general terms, you only want to see records that exist in both the tables. In that case, we would have chosen an inner join. So to summarize, if you get a requirement to build a CDS view with a join, you must first try to understand how the data from the tables is going to be fetched. Do you only need to see common records from both the tables or so you need all the records from one table irrespective of the situation in the other table. If you only need common records from both the tables, then choose in a join. If you need all the records from the first table, irrespective of the situation in the second table, then put the first table on the left hand side of a left outer join with the second table. Okay, so that's it for now. I hope the concept of a left outer join is now clear. Um, I would suggest trying this out in the system before proceeding on to the next lesson in the series. In the next video, we will be learning about case statements in CTS views. Until then, goodbye and keep coding.